What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's show of the Human Betterment Project. I have not been around uh, recently. Uh, I will get to why that is later in the uh, the video. Um, but today, first, we are going to be reviewing the True Grit Assault Runner. Actually, I think it's the True Grit Grit Runner. Assault Runner is a different brand. Um, this is a manual treadmill that I recently picked up and something I've been looking forward to getting for a while and I just want to give a review of that. In the past, I've always kind of wanted one of these manual runners. They're the ones that have the curved um, uh, treadmill to them. There's no power to them. They're completely driven by your own motion, basically. Um, but the problem was always that they were really expensive. The secondhand market for them is also really expensive. <clears throat> I actually tried to buy one on auction recently and it actually ended up going for retail value, which kind of defeats the entire purpose of an auction price, especially when you end up paying the 13% auctioning fee. On Black Friday this year, I happened to get lucky and I found a really great deal on one that was significantly less than what the normal prices for these things are. So generally, um, the one that is kind of the 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 standard that I've, I've been seeing around was one called the uh, Assault Fitness Assault Runner, um, and it was retailing for about three thousand dollars, way more than I felt like paying for this thing. On Black Friday, I just happened to be looking around on the internet and stuff, kind of looking for deals and seeing if there was any good fitness deals that would help with you know building out my home gym so that I can work out whenever I had free time. And I happened to find this tr this company called True Grit Fitness, and they were selling a manual curved treadmill. Just it looked just like the one from Assault Fitness, um, and it was more than half the price. So it, it was ended up being about the same price as your your standard mid tier electronic treadmill. Um, so I decided to go ahead and, and get it, and um, it took about a week or so to get here. It had to be shipped freight. Kind of took a while. It was a whole whole thing. A giant truck pull up into my driveway. I don't know if you've ever bought anything freight, but it's always kind of a, a thing um, that you're not expecting. Um, so how did it work? Um, so I love this thing. Um, so part of the problem or part of the reason that I bought this, uh, this particular treadmill and why I've always wanted one is I, I do some CrossFit style workouts, like some high intensity interval training workouts that might be broken up into different movements. So you might be doing kettlebell swings. It'll be like do 21 kettlebell swings and then go do a 400 meter run. So it's hard to get a, and, and these are usually for time. So it's hard to get a, a, a nice standardized 400 meters where I live, where I live has the, you know, in my neighborhood, if I, I could go running out in the neighborhood, that's what I was doing, but there's a lot of Hills um, there's a lot of like, like, like big hills, rolling hills, all kinds, you know, it's just, it's not flat surface. You're not going to get a true 400 meter run and it's going to change, you know, depending on what direction you go, it might be downhill, uphill, you know, different number of, of hills and climbs. And <clears throat> that's not really the point of the, the workout that time. They just want a straight 400 meter run. Um, so I thought it'd be good for that. The other thing I thought it might be good for is that I had done some research on it and because it's manual and it's, you know, you can't cheat it. You can't just like crank it up to 10 miles an hour, hold the hand, the side rails and kind of like move your feet in the air. Like it kind of, you know, Oh, I ran this fast. You didn't, not really. The motor did the work for you. This one, the, it's not going to do the work for you. A matter of fact, if you, don't keep a good stride, and if you don't have good form, it just kind of stops working. Um, it, it will it'll just grind to a halt. So in a way, it it forces me to to keep a good like stride and good form while I'm running, which is something that is hard to do on the road. You can kind of like sandbag it a little bit, walk it out a little bit, you know, um, kind of you know, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go, you know. Uh, much slower up these hills or I'm going to go, you know, real slow down this downhill or whatever. This thing just doesn't let you cheat. You can't really like go light. I mean, you can go for a walk, but even then it's forcing you to have good form and keep moving. Like if you start slowing down too much, it just stops. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know how it compares to the 
assault runner um, from a construction standpoint. I will say that this one was is very well put together. It feels very sturdy. Um, it it look, doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart on me. I don't feel like I bought, even though it was much, much cheaper than the assault fitness runner, I don't feel like I missed out on, on the high quality that I would expect from this kind of a purchase. Um, there are a couple things that are just like little nagging details um, that I wish were a little different. I wish the monitor had a few more options, and I think this is something the Assault Runner probably does better. Um, for example, it's only in miles. Like, So the part of the reason I bought the uh, this thing was so that I could do these CrossFit-style workouts and do 400 meters, but it doesn't do meters. It does miles. So I have to know what the conversion rate is for um, for those distances, which isn't hard. Um, you know, 400 meters is about a quarter of a mile. So as long as I know what it is in my head, then I can figure it out. But I kind of wish that, that that option to flip between miles and meters was, was there. Um, another thing I wish it could do, it shows you your um, sort of what your miles per hour are while you're running, you know, it'd be like, you're running seven miles an hour. That's great. But what if I want to know the pace? What if I'm trying to hit a certain pace? Like if you're doing training for a marathon, like you're trying to do like a sub four marathon or something like that, I think you have to have like a, a just short of a nine minute pace. Um, for every mile, this isn't going to tell you if you're holding that pace. So you're going to have to figure out the math yourself and then hold that pace. So just some, some little quality of life issues that I wish were a little bit better on this particular, um, treadmill, but mo the majority of those quality of life issues are th have to do with the monitor. And I, th I think that in the future, maybe the company upgrades the monitor, maybe there's, you know, something you could, they could do about it. Um, because it's not really part of the the overall mechanics of the the uh, treadmill, it's just software. So I'm and and like a, a monitor. So I think it's something that they could probably fix in the future. And I think if they want to kind of <clears throat> push themselves further in the, especially in the competitive world, um, that they're going to have to have that. Because uh, I think a lot of you know Olympic trial stuff or CrossFit um, trainers or the 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 games themselves at the CrossFit games they don't want to deal with that they're going to want meters because that's the standard throughout athletics like so you know when you watch the the Olympics they don't run the mile they run the fifteen hundred meter you know um, they don't run three point one miles they run the five k like the five thousand meters so if they want to push themselves more into the that kind of competitive realm I think it would probably be good for them to move to that meter system or at least have the option to go back and forth, which I think the assault runner does, but I'm not willing to pay the extra, you know, 16, 1700 grand, um, to, or I'm sorry, six, you know, the extra $1,700 to, to have that kind of a feature. That's not worth that. That's not worth the extra money, um, by far. Um, so I got such a great deal on this that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with this purchase actually. And an interesting thing is the, when I'm running on this, <clears throat> because it's forcing me to have proper technique, I do feel like I'm having to work harder than I, than I do on the road. But on the flip side, even though I feel like I'm working harder to maintain that, that proper form when I'm running or even at least a better form, I wouldn't say prop, like I don't have great form, but like better form, um, I'm having to keep move moving to uh, to keep it going, so it's forcing me to to go longer distances on the road. I get tired. I can kind of like you know slow it down or start walking a little bit. On this thing, I have to keep going if I want to keep this manual motor moving. Um, and uh, the, the other thing though is because it's not on the road, which is like asphalt and pavement, which is really rough on your joints if you do it a lot. Um, I was doing, I was running like every other day, um, like three times a week. And by the time I hit like 
like Friday, like my third session, I was starting to feel it. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I've got a pretty high resilience to that kind of thing, but you know, I definitely was feeling it. You know, I was like, oh yeah, my ankles and my knees are, they're feeling that, that asphalt, like, you know, um, uh, the pounding, you know, on the asphalt. But with this thing, um, I actually ran like, I think it was like three days in a row. Um, the same distances I would have run on those like three day, you know, the, every other day I ran it all in three days and I felt great. Like, um, had no joint discomfort, no, no knee discomfort, you know, um, none of that. I felt, I felt like I could just keep going. So for that alone, it's great. Uh, it's very, it's, it's much lower impact than running on the road is. And I kind of feel like in a, in some ways it might even be lower impact than the, the electronic treadmills that are doing, you know, motorized ones that are doing it for you. Because if you think about it, and I don't, I don't, somebody in, somebody in the comments is probably going to check my science on this, but, um, because there's force going, you know, moving these things around and stuff. And you, you know, if you are coming down on it, it's kind of, if you're at that moment, your shoe hits, the force is pulling you in a certain direction. Like that's, that's not you doing that. That's the belt, the motorized belt, you know, adding extra force onto the joints. Um, normally that wouldn't be a big deal and it's 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 still fairly low impact in comparison to say the road but i feel like the the these curved treadmills are even less impact on on your on your joints so i think this is actually going to allow me to run more often which is great because i'm considering doing some competitive races not as in i'm hoping to win cuz Lord knows how that will not happen. I'm not a very good runner, but as a challenge to myself, I have been kind of toying around with the idea of doing like a half marathon or a marathon, and this could help me get in more mileage if I start doing that kind of training. You know, um, that way I'm not like on the road every day uh, during that training and just kind of like beating up my joints and stuff. It would instead would just be like select days, maybe like during longer runs or whatever, whatever the training um plan is um but just something i've been kind of thinking about so i decided to buy this true grit grit runner it's a curved treadmill a manual one kind of similar to the assault runner um by assault fitness this one was on an amazing deal on black friday so i decided to get it to add you know extra running into my workouts um especially when the weather's really bad uh where i live it gets pretty rainy and cold and I don't want that to hold me back from getting in some uh, running training. Um, also, when I'm doing CrossFit wads and, and stuff, sometimes the workouts will be like 400 meters of this and then lift this or 800 meters and then lift this. And it's really hard to do that when you are, um, or when you live in a place that has like a lot of hills or something, it's hard to get an exact 400 meters or an exact 800 meters or whatever the, the measurement is. So this will allow me to get an exact number um, of, of the distance I'm going in a particular workout of the day uh, when it comes to CrossFit or if I'm just training for stamina or endurance in, in training. And, you know, I've been kind of considering doing a half marathon or maybe a full marathon. So this would be good on those uh, a good replacement for those track days when um, you have to run like, you know, six, 800 mile or six, six, 800 meter, you know, splits or something like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing video of this and kind of see how it, you know, it goes together and show you guys. And then I'll do a quick test and review of it. Um, but first I have to clean my garage because it is a mess and I got to fit this thing in here somewhere. It's kind of barely fitting in here as is. So I'm going to clean the garage real quick first, and then I will unbox this thing. Well, this thing is really well packaged. They must be quadruple plastic wrapped.
has some protected things here on the side, in the corners. So we got the lid open here. Open this other lid. There's a lot of cardboard I'm gonna have to get rid of later. So you can see the, the treadmill grid right here. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pull out these pieces here. I think we got the cross beams here. So we got the two side members here. And there should be a cross member in here somewhere. I think it might be down there in the corner. I'm gonna break this cardboard down a little bit more and then I'll take, take out this tread piece, set it up a little bit and then I'll come back. All right, so I got it all set up. It was a little more difficult than I thought because of the way the bolts were set up and stuff, but it wasn't that bad. Um, so you can see tread slide here. You got the monitor here. Some nice handholds. And it's pretty sturdy. I mean, these handholds are, I'll probably tighten these down a little bit more. But I'm going to take this for a spin real quick so you guys can see. Now, now that I've uh, talked about this and I've, sh I've shown some footage of uh, the unboxing and the um, the kind of how it works and stuff, I honestly want to give this thing like like a nine out of ten. Um, I think, like I said, I really love it, um, but there are some quality of life issues that I think need to be addressed in this product, like the monitor and the uh, the lack of the miles and meters issue um but that's a pretty minor that's a pretty minor uh complaint i do want to address one other thing um and that's the fact that i haven't been posting lately um it's not anything basically it's work um my work schedule changed recently and i kind of threw everything out of whack i had everything really dialed in like during the the covid lockdowns and stuff i had a really you know um a really set schedule. I was kind of working from home 
so I could like work out at lunch and it was a whole thing. And now they're kind of having us come back to the office every now and then I have a, a really big commute. Um, so it just kind of threw things out, out of whack for a while. And I really had to figure out what my new, my new routine for the day was during all that before I could start posting again and, and editing. <clears throat> um, also because of that, I want to address another thing. Uh, and that is the 75 hard challenge that I posted about in my last video and have failed at. Um, now I say failed at because it I did fail. Like I did not meet the requirements that I had set out for myself. But that is because of the work schedule issue. It kind of like it, it came out suddenly. Um, I wasn't prepared for it, and it kind of threw everything out of whack. And then I had the commute and blah 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 blah. Whatever. Um, at the end of the day, these are kind of excuses on why it failed. But Failure in this situation is just another opportunity to restart and start back over. So I will be starting this back over again. Um, and this time I will try to put out videos on, on a regular basis on how it's going. Uh, but I will be starting after Christmas because the holidays are just another recipe for potential issues. And I want to make sure that I start strong. So I will be starting the Monday after Christmas and I will start be starting the 75 day hard challenge again. If you want to see what the rules for that are, you can see my video up here. Um, and until then, I will see you guys next time. I've got an interesting video coming up about how you can make a hacked Peloton hacked. There's no real hacking involved, but it is a way to be part of the cycling Peloton craze on the cheap instead of having to pay 1500 you know, two, $2,500 for a Peloton. Instead, I'm going to show you how to do it for about 250 So um, you guys can catch out that video next.